Hello friends, my name is Sagar More and today in this video, I am going to explain what does it mean by CSS specificity. CSS specificity is a topic that many new front-end developers avoid for as long as possible. It sounds complicated. There are all these rules. You might even have to do some maths. Ultimately, you can only avoid it for so long. Specificity is an essential concept that you need to grasp to be an effective developer. Today, I will walk you through the concept of specificity in a simple and easy to understand manner. It's easier than you think. Let's understand what is CSS specificity. CSS specificity is the means by which browser decides which CSS property values are the most relevant to an element and therefore will be applied. Specificity is based on matching rules which are composed of different sorts of CSS selectors. CSS specificity tells you the answer of a common question that who would win in a fight of CSS rules. Before I start to explain the example of CSS specificity to better show you how CSS specificity works. Let me first start with the basic concept. So here is the first scenario. So for our first battle, let's pick two essentially identical selectors against each other. Take an example of class selector. Suppose there are two classes and those classes are applied to a same element with different properties. So as you can see on the screen that the class blue and box are two different classes. The blue class has blue color inside it and the box class has red color. These two classes are applied to a division element. In this case, what is your opinion? Which class will get applied here? Well, in this scenario, the second class will get applied, which has background color red inside it. And that class is a box class. So here the red background color will get applied. The reason is you probably already know the answer. That is the second class is the last one. The browser renders CSS from top to bottom approach. It simply means that it will detect the blue class. But after that, it also detects the box class which has red color inside it. And hence the red color will get applied. If you switch the order of these classes in your CSS like I have done here, then whichever class you have written in the last, it will get applied. So this was a very common scenario. Let's move to the next level. And the next level is ID versus classes. Here as you can see on the screen, I have written box ID and box class in my CSS. Here, box ID has blue color inside it and the box class has red color. And this box ID and box color are applied to the division. In this case, what is your guess? Which color would get applied? Well, here order or sequence rule doesn't get applied. The reason is ID has more priority than the class. So for this example, the blue color of box ID will get applied since it has more priority and classes has least priority than the IDs. So make sure you remember this rule. So these were the basic examples. Now let's move ahead to the rules of specificity. For beginner developers, trial and error is a great way to learn. But ultimately, there are just too many different possible scenarios to run through to get all the knowledge of what you should know. What we need is a hard and fast way to decide which selectors and browser places has more importance and why. In fact, there are simple rules that govern specificity. There is even a handy point system. So this is the tabular format of CSS specificity point system, which tells you the priority of your rules. If you write any CSS rule, 
and if you want to check the CSF specificity value then you need to cross check your rule with this table. This point table is very simple. Here you just need to do the addition. This addition of points can be done easily with the help of these four types of columns. From the right hand side in the first place it is element selector which has point 1 value. There is also mentioned that pseudo elements should be considered in this category. So it means element and pseudo elements can be considered of one point. From the right hand side the second column tells you the point value of class or attribute or pseudo classes. So if you have written class or attribute or pseudo classes in your CSS rule then it will have a value of point 10. The next one is ID selector. The ID selector has more priority than class selector, attribute selector, pseudo class selector, element selector and pseudo element selector also. ID selector has the point value of 100. And the last one is inline style sheet. Inline style selector has 1000 point value. It has more priority than any other selectors which I have mentioned. So from now onwards with the help of this table you can check the specificity value of any of your CSS rule. What you need to do here is you just have to add points by checking which selector you have used in your CSS rule. So if you have written multiple selectors for a single element with the help of this table you will get to know that which rule will get applied. If you don't want to calculate the specificity value on your own then there are specificity calculator available on internet. I have given you the link of specificity calculator in the description of video below. This CSS specificity calculator does the same thing which I described with the help of CSS specificity point table. Let's take an example of this scenario. If you have written this first rule which is li colon first child space h2 space dot title class. So to calculate CSS specificity of this particular rule you need to write values inside four columns. So the first column from the left hand side is for inline style sheet. The second one is for IDs. The third one is for classes, attributes and pseudo classes. And the fourth one is for elements and pseudo elements. So for this example we don't find any inline style sheet written so inline style sheet value will be 0. Secondly here no any id is given so the id value will be 0 again. The third column is for classes attributes and pseudo classes. So now as you can see here there is a title class and also first child pseudo class is there. So two points should be calculated one for class which is title class and the second for pseudo class which is first child. So you need to write two in this particular block and finally you can see two elements listed here in your CSS rule which is h2 and li. So these are two elements so elements has point one and we have written two elements so value 2 should be written here. So the total value of your CSS specificity is 22 excluding 0. Likewise let's see another example. In the next example here a rule is written like hash now space dot selected space greater than sign space anchor tag colon hover. As I told you before you just have to write four columns. In those four columns you need to write first column for inline style sheet. You need to consider second column for IDs, third column for classes, attributes and pseudo classes and the fourth column is for element and pseudo elements. 
now let's check the specificity value of this particular rule here hash now is a id only one id is written so one point will go in id column now as you can see that second dot selected class is written and again colon hover is another pseudo class so the value becomes 2 one point is for dot selected class which is a class and the second point is for colon hover class which is a pseudo class so as i told you two points will go in classes attribute and pseudo classes column this greater than sign doesn't have any value after that anchor tag is written which is a element so elements one point will go into the element and pseudo element section here the css specificity value is 121 which is 121 so this was the example to show you how to calculate css specificity you can use online calculators also with the help of given specificity calculator we can figure out most scenarios but there are few scenarios that we need to keep in mind for that there are special rules for these scenarios the first rule is the universal selector star has no value it's is equal to zero the second rule is when two selectors have the same specificity the last one wins it is because of the sequence the third rule is elements can never beat a class selector even if you pile them on and the fourth rule is important is really a important thing here it has more priority than anything else and it can beat up almost anything as i told you in the third rule that elements can never beat a class selector so here is the example here h2 is the element and dot header is the class it is applied to the h2 element only for h2 color blue is written in your css but dot header has color red in this case as i told you the classes will win because class has more priority than the element and as i have mentioned in the fourth rule important has more priority than anything else look at this scenario here h2 has blue color and it is given important and header class is also there which has red colors in the previous example red class got applied because the classes has more priority than element but in this case if you write important keyword then it will override anything whichever you have written and it will get the color for which the important is written so in this scenario blue color will get applied since the important keyword is written for this particular property so we can say that important keyword breaks all the css specificity rules and it overrides whichever css you have applied and it applies the css for which the important keyword is written so friends this was all about css specificity if you have any questions regarding this video then please write it in the comment section below make sure you watch my other tutorials also if you like the video click on like button share this knowledge by sharing this video link with your friends and family if you want to see more technical videos click on subscribe button if you have already subscribed to my channel then click on bell icon and finally thank you for watching stay tuned be technical